Jeremy. I'm Marianne. And we're, we're the, the Perkins. Perkins. There's six total in the family, us and the four kids. Our kids' names are Jackson, Ella, Emmy, and Charlotte. Me and Jeremy met at Bayside Church back in 2006. 2006. <laughs> I did not have a pool when I was growing up, so which is probably why I overcompensate now. Is this going to be the biggest pool in Sacramento? It's going to be one of the biggest pools in Sacramento. And it's always, it's been a vision of mine for about 15 years. This will be one of the biggest pools in, in, in Northern California. Really? Uh-huh. Oh. About 13 years ago, we were um, on a vacation in, in Hawaii at the, at the Hyatt, the Grand Hyatt in a in Kauai, and this pool there is incredible. It's, it starts off like a um, small pool at the top, it turns into waterfalls, it goes in a big pool, which pours in another big pool. It has like a huge lazy river, palm trees everywhere. It, uh, it was the coolest pool I've ever seen in my life. And I, I told Marianne when we were out there in Kauai, I'm like, I wanna build a pool like this in my, in my backyard one day. And, and, and she thought I was crazy. You're crazy to spend that much on a pool. <laughs> but he wanted to be on the ocean and and so that didn't happen. So we decided to just build, he really wanted water in the backyard, so that was our compromise. If we can't, if we can't, if we can't, live, <laughs> if we can't live on the ocean, try and bring the water to us. I, I multiple <laughs> times tried to say, well, maybe we should just go a little bit smaller, but he wasn't having it. What's so awesome about this job is Jeremy and Marianne have a clear vision of what they want in their backyard. It's really what they want is a backyard paradise. They want to recreate the great times they had in their favorite place in the world, and that's in Hawaii. You know, we always talk about family, and we get the opportunity to build pools for families all over this country. But it was really me going to my granddaughter's gymnastics class and I'm sitting down and I hear the lady in front of me talking about her swimming pool and the kind of what they want to accomplish in their dream. And we start a conversation at gymnastics while they're watching their kids, I'm watching my grandkids and we start the journey of making this dream come true in their backyard. That's what's so fun about this job. You see, there's gonna be something for everybody on this pool because the family has dreamt about this for so long. We're gonna incorporate all kinds of elements that you might see in Hawaii. We're gonna bring in dozens of waterfalls to make this feel and look natural. And just the raw scope and scale of this project is gonna test the limits of what we can do. The Perkins have a huge backyard for us to work with. So big, in fact, we're building two pools to make their Hawaiian dream a reality. The upper geometric pool will be adjacent to the house, following the same curvature of the existing covered patio. It'll feature sloped cobble steps, two fire bowls, and a 10 by 12 spa for all their friends. It's also gonna have a negative edge that gives the illusion that water is flowing all the way down to the lower pool. The lower freeform pool will feature a lazy river surrounding an island with fire pit, a beach entry, tile wrap bar stools, a massive grotto, waterfalls on all sides, and a bridge. We're also going to have hundreds of tons of rock all over this backyard, and we're gonna be using moss rock to give it that real Hawaiian feel. And oh, how could we forget the best part of this whole build, a 100-foot water slide that drops out in the deep end of the pool. It is going to be a massive, feature-packed Hawaiian paradise. We've got complications all over this project, and let's talk about a couple of them. When you're digging a project this big, effectively a small crater in the moon, you've got to make sure that you've got the right structure that is going to go into play. As we go into the steel phases, some of the challenges we are going to have is that grotto. See, what people don't think about is, sure, it's easy to dig a grotto, but what about the roof, the cap, the lid of that grotto? When we get this thing built, it is going to weigh several tons and have several tons of rock on top of that. So we're going to have to use even thicker steel than normal to make sure that we accommodate for that. So this is going to take four to maybe five times what a normal pool would take as far as time. Not only that, we've got more tractors and we're doing dirt on site. What this means is because we don't have to carry the dirt away that we should be able to dig it quicker. That's if we don't hit rock.
but Lance, we've got so much going on on this project. Kind of tell me where we're at and what we've had to change since the original planning phase. Yeah, I'm excited to show you what we've been doing out here. One of the biggest ones is right here on our left. We have this massive oversized grotto. We'll be surrounded on the backside with all natural rock and waterfalls. And then also on top, we'll carry those waterfalls through. Um, because of the size and scale of this, we typically support larger grottos, as you know, with a column or some type of pier. But our engineer, again, was concerned with the weight of this lid and creating a punching effect. How big is this lid? Gosh, the span on this has got to be close to 20 feet right now, and the depth of this grotto is probably every bit of 12 to 15 feet. Um, just a massive grotto, biggest grotto I've ever been part of. You see we're over here. Looks like we hit some rock in the deep end here. We did. Excavation got a little challenging on the deep end here. You can see the striations through the wall here. We weren't able to get a bucket through it, so we had to hammer for about three days in the deep end, but it came from just that hard, compacted, decomposed granite. David Lance, this is one heck of a dig. Who did we have leading the excavation here? Yeah, well, I'll give you one guess and I'm sure you get it. We had Chilo out here. Gotta be Chilo, huh? Cool. Yeah. Hey, Chilo, how's it going, brother? My name is Cecilio Casares. Cecilio Casares, I work for Premier more than 30 years. Everybody call me Chilo. Well, this has been a pretty crazy dig. You're the best excavator. You've been with us for 30 years. Tell me about some of the complications. I know that you were pointing out to that keyway there. See the hill, the top, I need to cut all the dirt down. I see some of the ripper marks right here. It looks like we hit rock. You can see all this vein is uh, granite. All this granite had to spend like two days jackhammer. Two days jackhammer in this area. I see that we've got some water. Are there any concerns with the water coming uh, out here? All this granite, all the time when you dig here, water comes from the ground. It's mm -hmm. like like a table, water table. Yeah. All the time, water comes from in the hill, they come. But that's the thing is if we look from here, you know, to the top of that house, we've got to be 20, 30 feet up there. So all of that water's got to be dumping down here. In the pool, it's like a boat. Once it's plugged in, oh, yeah. we don't want it floating away, right? Oh, this is why I put a drain down in that side. We've got this island right here. Yeah. We've got that sunken fire pit. If we've got it raining, that water's got nowhere to go. And I got the drain down below the pool and go all the way to that little canal. How many pools do you think you've dug, Kilo? <laughs> I don't know, maybe a little more than 5,000, 6,000. And you have grown with the company and you're the master and you've trained so many just amazing excavators, but 5,000 pools, that's just unbelievable. You're the yeah. best at what you do. I like this job because you never work in the same place. When you first started digging pools with us, how tall was I? Oh. Was it well, like this high? What the same like the pump. <laughs> <laughs> the same size like the pump. I met Brian little junk, real junk. I put it on the tractor, give it right on the tractor, and they're so happy because I'm driving the tractor and Brian next to me. And yeah. what did you do before you dug poles? Before this company, you don't have anything. I worked in Mexico, do like in freeways and do lakes, like like a Folsom Lake. Do You'd actually dig lakes? Uh, no, digging like uh, the footing. Oh, the footing? Digging for a lake. If you're going to build lakes, this pool is almost as big as a lake, isn't it? No. <laughs> pretty close. Pretty close. Yeah, but freeways, close. right? If we can do yeah. freeways, we can yeah. do this project, right? Oh, yeah. No. Nope. Dude, no, as always, awesome job, yeah. Chilo. Thank you all so right. much, brother. I'll leave no you problem. to it, and uh, we'll get back to you in a little bit, all right? Okay. Take all care, right. brother. All right. We're actually going to talk about the scale of this swimming pool. This probably is the biggest residential swimming pool, I think, in my 35 years I've ever built. The plumbing on this lazy river is 10 inches. That's one piece of pipe, and it pushes 2,500 gallons of water per minute. Matter of fact, when we talk about pipe, we have miles of piping out here, and over, I think, two dozen pumps on this particular pool. Well, you talk about a resort in the backyard. This is physically the resort that you would see in some of the finest hotels in the world built in this backyard. Arturo, como esta? Bien. Holy cow, this is a lot of plumbing. Matter of fact, how much are we putting in this pool? Yeah, it's a 10,000 foot for this pool. 10,000 feet? Yeah. Are you kidding me? What kind of size pump are we gonna put on this? It's a 
10 horsepower. 10 horsepower? Yeah. We usually use a one horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to push about 2,500 gallons of water per minute. Yes. Why don't we go take a look Good. at the rest of the pool? This is the brain system for the entire pool. This is the arteries that are going to feed all the water to all the different functions of the pool. We got a uh, slide, and how long is that now? It's a hundred feet. Hundred feet long yeah. slide, and I think it drops 20 to 25 feet down. 15 waterfalls, a hundred foot slide, and we have a floor system with over 70 heads in that. Mm -hmm. Yes. No wonder why we need so much plumbing. Yeah. This is like plumbing 15 or 20 pools in this one project. Have you ever built a job with this much plumbing before? Mm, yes. You have? Yeah. <laughs> wow, you do incredible work. Because this pool is so big, we used a cleaning system. It's actually called a floor system. That's a pop-up system. Brian, don't you explain a little bit more how that works, Brian? Each one of these jets is going to pop up from the bottom of the pool. And you're gonna see dozens of them. What they do is they will pop up in in sequence, and then they will push the dirt to the main drain. Dirt, debris, whatever the case may be. That main drain is going to suck it in and take it all the way back to the filter, cleaning the pool. Yeah, so they pop up. They shoot a stream of water, they push the debris down, and then they rotate as they're sinking down. So when they pop up again, they're cleaning another area. A pool this big really needs a system like this. Why? Because, well, shoot, with your normal pole and brush, you just can't reach some spaces. And realistically, your normal kind of little robots that are clean there, they're just not gonna get around to that pool quick enough. You know, a lot of the additional benefits is it actually mixes the water better. You're actually taking the warm water from the top of the pool and it's going to the bottom of the pool where the jets pop up and it's distributing the warm water as it's sifting through the top of the pool equalizing the pool temperature another thing that it does really well is it mixes the chemicals evenly throughout the entire pool so you don't have any density of chemicals like you would just be pouring it it does a really great job of mixing the water with the pool what this basically means is you're gonna have a cleaner warmer pool so we're making great progress right now we've cut in a lot of the notches where the rock waterfalls are gonna to start to come in the pool so you have to remember we've got 15 to 20 different points where we're gonna have water actually entering the pool. You know, this pool, you had to think everything out in advance. Like even before we started digging the hole, we had to bring the palm trees in to put those in because there wasn't gonna be any way to get those in after the fact. <laughs> well, they're so heavy, you're craning those in. <laughs> also, because of the elevation challenges, you'll notice that we put a lot of gravel in the bottom of the pool. What's happening is we've created a new lowest point in the yard and everything is draining right here. There's gotta be 80 to 90 different pop-up heads here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Jeremy and Marianne don't want another job by getting a pool out here, and that is why we've got the N4 cleaning system. The whole idea of this is this is actually going to blow a lot of that dust and debris towards the deep end of the pool, and we'll actually catch it right there. And by doing this, it kind of randomly cleans 100%, at least 95% of the entire pool. Only way to clean this type of pool. I kind of wish I had one of these in my kid's room. <laughs> <laughs> You'd need 150 heads to do that one. Every phase of this pool is going to be complicated. Why? Because we're using not one, not two, not three, not four, even five plus pools worth of materials. So the amount of plumbing, the amount of steel that we're using, even the amount of gunite that we're going to use is going to take a day or two days or three days, which is not normal. The complication with this is if weather starts to come in, that can mess up the entire process. Brian, every single time I step on this property, it takes my breath away. I can tell you, in 35 years, I don't think we've ever done anything more elaborate, more sophisticated, or more complex than this project right here. We have 4,000 square feet of water surface area, 100,000 gallons of water, over three miles of plumbing in this, and as you said, uh, a million pounds of rock. We've got grottos, we've got bridges, We've got negative edge. Uh, not to mention enough pumps to fill a small lake. By the way, I thought the slide was gonna be here a month and a half ago. We're already four and a half months through this nine month project and still no slide. Well, that's the crazy thing that's happening right now is everything is in such demand and it's hard to get everything right now. 
that one is not quite here. I mean, we're taking up the, the amount of equipment that you might see on 10 or 20 normal pools. Why don't we go look at the upper pool and we'll discuss how that's going along. And like everything on this project, Brian, bigger, bigger, bigger. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 14 foot spa. This is not a spa, this is a pool right here. It's just a really warm pool. Because what this is gonna end up doing right here, so we've got our two massive sun shelves on either side, but this is gonna actually kinda almost do a peekaboo effect where this is gonna end up three inches plus or minus right above water level, and that is gonna create a really neat effect on the eye. And what makes it so tricky, Brian, is the water pressure or the hydraulics has to be absolutely 100% correct. So it actually has to go 360 degrees around the spa. Now the effect is, while it's going over 360 degrees, it needs to look like a sheet of glass. And to do that, we have to return the water absolutely even so it doesn't ripple anywhere. To make this thing work correctly, the tile has to be perfect. It can't even be 16th of an inch off. Well, you need a whole lot of water to do that. And this is where it gets really complicated. Not only do we have to spill over all four sides of the spa, but then it's got to spill over this 75 foot infinity edge on the front of that pool. This is the thing that I don't think people understand today is pools are so low maintenance. What you can actually do is these heads are going to go off in sequence and they'll actually pop up and blow dust this way all the way to that main drain and catch it within the filter. People are thinking, man, you've got to pull this big. It's going to take forever to clean. Well, no, not so much. Now let's go down to the grotto. Now that we've got the grotto lid poured in place, now comes time for lots of rock. And it's time to rock and roll. What we have to do is lift these huge rocks on the end of the skid loader chained up into place. And again, what we're trying to do is make this from looking like a man-made structure into what you would naturally see in Hawaii. Yeah, we want this water, we have a plumbing element too, we want this water to go over the lip of the grotto so they can hide back in the grotto, just like they were a cave in Hawaii. So we have to have a lot of volume going through here, but because we're inside and there's rock encompassing the entire grotto, we have to do a lot of work that's actually over our head. And as you well know, that's a messy job. You know, you can have as much fun as you want on these projects. Because it is all custom, we're gonna even go as far as putting cup holders in there. Look at that massive 2,000 pound rock in front of the support pillar, which we had to make double the size because we continue to put more and more weight on top of it. Well, look what we have to do to keep these things in place, right? We got a massive chain holding that in, but this is what I was talking about. These big rocks is what's gonna make it look more natural. Little rocks, they look a lot fake. But this is the other cool thing. This is where the master masonry comes in. Look at how we've actually blended this rock in that's gonna blend in with that water line. Also, if we look at the roof, look at the size of the flagstone that is on the roof. It's actually gonna feel like a grotto that you might actually see in Hawaii. Shoot, man, look back there. We've even got cup holders into this. <laughs> so you're gonna have your Mai Tai, you're gonna have your grotto, you're gonna have a whole Hawaiian experience in there. People don't realize that those rocks, that flagstone, flagstone weighs 50 or 60 pounds each and you have to stick that up and keep it up there while you're trying to mortar it in and look at where you're at right where the hundred foot water slide comes out you know any Hawaiian project wouldn't be Hawaii without a couple islands and this is our island an unbelievable island with an amazing amount of features but how do we get to this island we've got our bridge for starters and you know what's going to be so unique about this bridge is we've actually got two waterfalls that are going to be spilling on either side of that bridge as the kids go through that lazy river that's cool and this right here is a massive sunken fire pit it's going to be dry in here but they're going to be able to see not only the waterfalls coming from the house but they're going to be able to see the kids floating around them. Hey, Jeremy's over there. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, you take the plank. I'm gonna walk the bridge. What's up, guys? Man, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Perkins Paradise. You know, Jeremy, when we first met you and Marianne, you said you actually bought this lot because this lot fit your vision of this, I can't even call it a swimming pool, the resort in your backyard. Is it kind of turned out the way you thought? Coming together even better. It's, it is amazing. But we're beyond excited. It's uh. <laughs> I think every day when we wake up, we see it's a whole, there's day to day, there's a whole crew of people here. <laughs> Tractors, machines, cement trucks. It's like, 
it's pretty crazy so we're just waiting for this thing to be done and so we can enjoy it we're, oh, we're stoked what do the kids think because i know once they see the pool like this they're just probably getting antsy already oh they can't wait there they keep asking me where the water slide is going to be <laughs> <laughs> that was a good question by yeah. the way <laughs> what has been the thing that you've been most excited about seeing so far oh uh, the grotto because it's when you're building the grotto you can't it's hard to imagine it's just like a hole that comes back and then seeing the formation of it we put the little hidden beer fridge behind it <laughs> kind of cool. well i gotta tell you uh thank you for your vision it is about half done and now all the finished work is going to start so we can't wait to see this thing kind of develop because when, when it's done and when we see you next hopefully it'll be when this thing is finished uh we want to lie yeah i can't wait it's getting hot, <laughs> it's getting I'm, ready, hot. I'm ready to get in there Well, today we're at the Perkins home, revealing the Perkins paradise. Not only am I inspired, but I'm proud of what our team can accomplish. It's absolutely amazing. This pool has everything. Not only is it over 5,000 square feet of pool surface area, but it's got 150,000 gallons of water. You've got lazy rivers, you've got 14 waterfalls, you've got a 20 foot grotto, you have a 100 foot slide, and you even have a beach entry for you and about 30 of your closest friends. You don't just have a spa. This is an infinity edge spa. You can look out from the upper deck and this thing looks like a sheet of glass. The guys, the team executed to perfection. They didn't miss a beat on this entire project. Jeremy, Marianne, we are so excited to finally unveil your Hawaiian paradise. Matter of fact, here it is, guys. Ten years of like this dream of having this amazing pool. I, I didn't think it even turn out this good, you know. So I was blown away. The kids and everybody love the water slide and doing all that, but I'm more of like a just chilling and relaxing. But I think their favorite feature would probably be the slide. It's awesome that fire pit's built below the water level. Like when you're down there, you, you really feel like you're in a, like a different oasis kind of thing. It's, it's nice to have like the dust settle, so to speak, and and be able to enjoy it. We love it. Wish. Uh, Wish it was sunny all year round. We wanted to say thank you to Brian and Paul for accepting this big project and building our dream pool. There was a lot of time and energy went into it and we just really appreciate everybody that was, was part of that this last year. Well son, this has got to be some of our finest work. I mean look at that. It's really, really something special. You know, it's so rare in life today to see someone's dream come to fruition. You know, and this is really one of those cases of just a fantastic dream. This really is the way that we kind of envision, and hopefully it's exactly the way that the family envisioned using their new backyard paradise. When it looks like this, and when you see the family enjoying it like that, it really does turn out better than you'd hoped for. I mean, how lucky are we? We get to stand up here, watch the family, enjoying and seeing their dream come true, and being a big part of this. We might have the best jobs in the world. It's, it's not bad. Nice job, son. Hey, thank you so much for watching Passion for Splash, and this is just the beginning. We have new episodes coming out, so if you want to see them as soon as they come out, make sure you like and subscribe. Yeah, if you like it, click once, but if you really appreciate my extraordinary talent, just click it twice. We'll know that you appreciate what I bring to the table. Not food, what I bring to the building table. Yeah. I know that's where you're going with this. <laughs> well, usually the table comes to you, so. <laughs>